All right, well, uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you, Shree, and uh, Fendi, and Susan, and uh, Anna. It's great to have a chance to be here this morning, and I've had the benefit of just having had a chance to look around the new facilities that we were just hearing so much about. Um, I suppose there are three thoughts that go through in our mind hearing these uh, uh, both uh, very insightful presentations. Uh, the first of which is that despite all of the pressures, uh, all of the kind of uh, constraints on the NHS, hearing what we just heard I think is a source of optimism. Uh, it reminds us that actually, if you think about just about any treatment area, uh, and that certainly would go for urological uh, cancer and surgery, but any treatment area offered at a hospital like Darren Valley, uh, I don't think anybody in their right mind would prefer to have been treated five years ago or ten years ago or fifteen years ago. The fact is that modern medicine as practiced here and elsewhere is better than it has ever been. And I think that gives us some confidence that the same will probably be true in five, ten, fifteen years hence. And this was uh, certainly brought home to me just looking at the new uh, sports literature that's just been installed. I was uh, remembering that it was probably about 25 years ago when I was a uh, wet behind the ears uh, jobbing manager at Guys and Tommies um, involved in installing the uh, Dornier literature uh, there, which kind of, as I recall, kind of involved sort of cranes, big bathtubs of water, um, and cost, I think, uh, north of a million quid. Uh, so it was kind of amazing to see a uh, fixed uh, lithotripter uh, shrunk down in size, no huge bathtub, and for about a third of the cost of what it was a uh, quarter of a century ago, doing far more precise uh, therapeutic interventions and with better results uh, in terms of patient experience as well. So just a kind of very concrete reminder, actually, of how uh, medicine advances. And in the context of cancer, a reminder that although a lot of the uh, headlines that we see are about um, new uh, oncology uh, advances, immunotherapy. Actually, for most cancer patients, uh, it is also uh, surgeons and uh, radiotherapy uh, that produces a lot of the survival gain. It's not just the stuff we read about kind of, uh, in uh, the uh, popular media. And so uh, that is a source of uh, optimism. But I suppose the second thought that came to my mind is a sense of challenge. And that challenges specific to uh, circumstances facing uh, you here, given the growing population uh, confronting extra pressures on hospitals, clinics, referrals, referrals that we want as we're doing uh, public health uh, and education campaigns around getting patients to present uh, earlier, uh, but also the paradox, frankly, of cancer treatment in the round. And that paradox is uh, simply expressed by saying we have the uh, best cancer survival outcomes that we've ever had. And at the same time, uh, partly as a result, we have more people living with cancer than we've ever had before. And Cancer Research UK now estimate that the lifetime uh, likelihood of getting cancer for somebody born since 1980, I think, is uh, one in two. Um, that's partly because people aren't dying from other conditions, and it's partly because they're surviving cancer. So uh, I don't regard this as being victims of their own success, but what it does mean is that how uh, cancer services operate is not only of huge importance now, but it's going to be of even more importance in the act, uh, over the next five or ten years. In that context, uh, we know that um, there's a lot that uh, we can be very uh, proud of, particularly in uh, the areas that we've been talking about this morning. I think uh, now more than eight out of ten uh, people with a prostate cancer diagnosis will uh, live for, be alive uh, five years later. Uh, for people with testicular, men with testicular cancer, uh, that's nearer to ten out of ten. Uh, but for bladder and kidney cancers, uh, that's not yet the case. Uh, it's nearer to a 6 out of 10 uh, five-year survival rate. And so some of that will be therapeutic advance, but some of that will be early detection. And early detection means that many more people are going to be arriving in uh, clinics such as these uh, to get checked out. And I think that's why uh, the point that uh, Shree was making about how teams are organized, one day, same day uh, testing, um, rather than people being passed around from pillar to post, the anxiety that goes from kind of wondering whether uh, a test has uh, produced a, a positive result, uh, sometimes a sense that uh, when patients are interacting with different bits of the NHS, the system, uh, and indeed often the staff experience it, it kind of success uh, despite the system, not because of it, uh, changing that through uh, one day uh, integrated uh, testing arrangements, better team working, is obviously part of how we're going to have to respond to this large foreseeable increase in the number of patients who are going to be arriving at Barrett Valley and elsewhere uh, for testing. And that, I think, in turn uh, relates to my final uh, sort of observation, just kind of hearing, hearing what we've heard, which is that I think one of the great things about uh, this hospital 
is that um, actually under Susan Susan's leadership, under the board, uh, the clinical body, um, it has recognised that um, it can't, uh, it's not an island. Uh, actually, it's the uh, partnership working with other uh, excellent hospitals around as well, uh, be they uh, Bromley or uh, some of the clinicians we have uh, from Medway, uh, the partnership uh, with Guys and Tommies, uh, the work with Moorfields here. Uh, actually, the future of uh, acute services and hospital services is as networks uh, rather than as standalone uh, organisations trying to go against uh, everybody else. And I think um, that is the kind of new spirit that we're trying to kind of infuse across the NHS. Uh, in some ways, council services have been um, head of the game on that ever since uh, something called Calvin Hine that some of you may recall that said uh, a number of decades ago, actually, we've got to think about um, networks of cancer care and identify where the specialist uh, units will be. But that doesn't mean they're all at the teaching hospital. And I think um, the final uh, reminder that I got from uh, the presentation this morning was, of course, that actually a lot of the improvement and the innovation that has happened throughout 68 years of the history of the National Health Service has actually come from places like Barra Valley, from uh, hospitals of this kind of size, not necessarily the uh, purely uh, the large uh, academic research centres, fantastic though they are. And so whether you're thinking about um, where uh, uh, joint replacements, hip replacements were invented, uh, or IVF, or many other, they all came out of uh, what we used to call district general hospitals. Uh, they didn't come out of the big centres, and I think that sense of can do, improvement is possible, linking research and clinical practice, and excellent patient care, we just heard about this morning, is yet another fantastic reason why we're all here today to celebrate the opening of this new centre. Thank you so much.